Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be taking the wooden floor material from our last video and adding in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic lived in feel. Before we get started though, I want to take a look at the uh, files that we'll be using during this video. We're going to be making use of floor smudges type A medium 001 and also gun scratches 003 both of which I already have saved to my hard drive and I'll be including a link to them beneath this video. Okay, let's head over to Maya. Hopefully this will be looking familiar to you. It's uh, it's the scene as we left it in our last video. Um, if you remember, the material converter did the majority of the work for us. It brought in all the textures, connected up the nodes. Um, all we did was add in a multiply node to make a slight adjustment to the roughness map um, to give us more control over its effect on our, on our finished shader. And it's actually the gloss slash roughness map that we're going to be working on first. Um, but before we start working with the nodes, I do want to just take a moment to explain exactly what it is we're about to do. We're going to be taking our original roughness map, where the dark areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the brighter areas are less shiny. Um, and then we're going to import our smudges texture. We're going to take the brighter areas of that map, uh, i.e. The, the footprints and smudges and whatnot, uh, and add that over the top of our roughness map. So on the actual material, wherever there's uh, footprints and smudges and whatnot, that'll, that'll be, the reflections will be more blurred, less reflective, just in those areas, um, which is exactly the sort of effect that we want. Once we have this sort of combined roughness map, we'll then feed that into our wooden floor material. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get working on our nodes. So the first part we're going to be adjusting is our roughness map, which is here. I'm just going to move these nodes out of the way, give us a bit more room to work with. And then from the Create menu, I'm going to type in File. And that will allow us to bring in a, well, a file, funnily enough. <laughs> um, so let's call this Smudges, because that's the file that we're bringing in first. And I'll now find where I've put those smudges on my hard drive. Remember it's floor smudges type A medium 001 and it's the overlay 16 that I'm going to use, the 16-bit version of the texture. Um, as I explained in the last video, 16-bit files have a, a greater color depth which just means we get, we get more detail from our overlay. So hit open on that and then before we go any further I need to change the color space. Now the color space by default is set to RGB as a general rule, if the texture uh, affects the color of our material, i.e. the color texture uh, and the reflection texture, um, we'd want to leave that on sRGB because we want gamma corrections to be applied to those, those textures. Um, but for textures that don't impact the color, like gloss maps, roughness maps, overlays, displacement maps, etc., we don't want gamma corrections to be applied. We want the texture in its raw form so I'm going to change that to raw there we go okay so now that's loaded we need a way of controlling uh, or, or a node to, to add this information into our roughness map yeah so if I just create a little bit of room again and I'm gonna get a redshift it's under utility I believe uh, color layer. There we go, that's the one. Which is an absolutely ridiculously huge node. <laughs> so I'll just place that there. Um, we'll minimize that down in a minute. And what we want to do is feed in our original roughness map into the base. I'll just make this bigger for a second. Remember, we're just going to use the red. In fact, we'll get the we'll use the whole image, and then I'll get the red channel from the uh, from the output there. So let's get the whole image and feed that into the base color. Yeah. And then, if I were to get the red output and feed that into the roughness, like so, it doesn't do much at all, which isn't really what we want. We want to change this to... It'll work out once we get the other nodes in, don't worry. So, um, now I'm going to get the color from our smudges and feed that into layer 1, like so. And that's all we need to do with connecting these up. So let's minimize this down so it doesn't confuse my brain. Uh, and then we'll call this uh, smudges add. Because this is the node that will add our smudges into our existing roughness map. 
but as you can see at the moment it's looking very very reflective and shiny so something isn't quite right so we have a few things to change um, where is it the blend mode for a start we want to change to screen uh, here we go now what screen does is it's a lot like a multiply node but um, basically the it inverts the materials yeah then does a multiply operation then inverts them back that, that's how a screen works but in, in in simple terms it's a great way of getting our smudges texture to get to be overlaid on top of our roughness texture in, in a very accurate way uh, so that, that's what it's doing in the background and you can see the smudges are now appearing on our floor um, and they, they're looking pretty good um, one thing I would want to do though is slightly adjust the scaling so I'm going to click on the smudges here and then we've got this repeat value yeah now we want to turn that down a little bit because our smudges are just a little bit too small so maybe a 0.7 value there yeah that looks about right but what we do need to do is lessen the impact that this overlay is having overall now we could um, start to do this via this masking value but what I'm going to do is duplicate what we've already done with this roughness adjust yeah so I'm gonna copy that Oof, don't really want all the nodes that go with it though thank you very much and move that down here and then I'll name this smudges adjust because this will adjust our smudges for us and then I'll feed the color into input one and then the output into uh, layer Ooh, just open this up again and then feed the output into layer one yeah so it's still doing exactly the same as it was but now we've got this extra node to give us a bit more control on one i.e. Uh, the multiply value of one is multiplying the smudges by one and it's it basically it's exactly what we had before if I change this to zero we should, if I've done it right, <laughs> see no smudges whatsoever. There you go. So we want this to be about a 0.5, I think, as a good starting point. It's only supposed to be a subtle effect. We don't want the floor to look dirty. We just want it to look uh, just look like it's got a bit of use. Um, and I think that will work quite well for us. Maybe maybe slightly higher, maybe 0.7. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell at the previewing sort of stage, but it's something you can go back and adjust later which is part of the reason it's important to name these nodes as you go because otherwise you're going to go back later and completely forget <laughs> what all the different nodes are doing but anyway that's our that's our smudges done so the next step is to add in our scratches now that's going to be applied to the normal map part of our material so I'm going to drag all these nodes down and focus on our normal map which is here okay so let's bring in another file like so I'll just move these nodes over here and we'll call this one scratches funnily enough and then I'll find the file which is gun scratches 003 there we go and again we'll use the overlay 16 bit and again we'll change it to raw because we don't want gamma corrections applied to this texture. With that in place, we now need a node to tell Redshift that this is going to be used for height data. Yeah, So I'll go down to the Redshift utilities, and it's a Redshift bump map. And then you just feed the color into the input, and there we go. Now our scratches, or Redshift knows that our scratches are a, a bump map. So now we need a way of keeping our normals that we've already got but adding in the normal information or the height information from these scratches and Redshift has a nice little handy bump blender node and that's what we're going to be making use of so I'm going to feed the normals into the base input Hello, there we go and this new bump map into bump input zero and then we've got a few options here first one uh, and very important you click this one is to turn it into additive mode if not, um, it will the, the bump. If we set the strength to maximum, will completely override the normal information. We don't want that. We want it to add to it, so it needs to be additive mode. Yeah. So with that selected, we can now feed in our bump map into 
the bump input on our shader it's now keeping all the normal information but it will allow us to start ad adding in our uh, our scratches yeah so at the moment you can see we've we've got something in layer naught but layer naught the weight is at zero we want to up that weight obviously to one well it's, we're going to use one and now you can start to see our scratches though there are some issues first of all the scratches are scaled completely wrong uh, and also they're bumping out of the floor rather than cutting into them so let's get that fixed first of all we'll adjust the scaling it's going to the uv node attached to our scratches there um, and i'm going to change that to about a value of 2.5 or so i think that'll work pretty well and then in the bump map node you have the height now all we want to do is change that to a negative value so minus point Oh, one maybe. Let's have a look. That's nah, definitely too high. Let's try 0 0.003. Might be a little bit too subtle there. Yeah, they're just starting to come in. In fact, I think we would have been fine on 0 0.003. It's hard to tell at the previewing stage, but I think that will work well for us. So, with that done, I'm just going to quickly rename this to Scratches Add, because that's where the scratches are added into our normal map. Um, and I think that will do. Just neaten this up a little bit, like so. And now I'm going to close this down and set up a, a final render, basically. So let's just change the resolution up a bit. And I'll hit render and pause the recording. Okay, so here's our finished render. Um, and it's not looking too bad. I'd certainly make a few more adjustments, I think. Um, the smudges and the scratches are both still a little bit too strong, so they need to be adjusted down a little bit. But overall, yeah, I, I think that'll work nicely. So, in summary, we've taken our material from the previous video and we've added in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel.